One item I often get asked about is Zoom eyepieces. Are they any good? Are they worth the money? Uh, what do I think of them? Well, before you go rushing out to buy one, uh, you may want to uh, watch this video first. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason. First off, uh, apologies for the long upload time. It's been about three weeks, hasn't it, since my last upload. Well, I'm back on my feet after being flattened by a bit of autumnal flu. So I've been feeling sorry for myself for the last couple of weeks. Anyway, uh, back, back in full health now, so uh, on with the show. Now, just in case you're not familiar what a Zoom eyepiece is, this isn't a Zoom eyepiece. Um, I do own one. Uh, more, more about that in a, in a short while. Uh, but imagine this is a Zoom eyepiece. And uh, if, if you imagine that, it, that twisting this or turning this actually alters the focal length of the eyepiece. So what, what they usually do is they'll start out a, a low, lower powered eyepiece going into a, a high power, a high powered eyepiece. Something like an 8mm, uh, which is your high power, up uh, down to around about a 23, I think they go, something like that. So you're getting, I don't know, you know, 15, 16 eyepieces all in one eyepiece. And that sounds fantastic on the tin. Sounds great, doesn't it? <laughs> well, it's like most things in life. If it sounds too good to be true, usually it is. Now the uh, eyepiece or the zoom eyepiece I want to be talking about mainly today is this one here. Now this is the one you've all been asking me about. It's very popular on Amazon and, and eBay and places like that. And I do own this or uh, one very, very similar to this or in this price range, uh, let's say. But for the life of me, I cannot find it. I've searched everywhere, every bottom drawer I could have looked through, and I just can't seem to find the eyepiece. But anyway, it doesn't matter. At least I've given it a good uh, a run. And, uh, and I can tell you why I actually don't like it, and I don't miss it. Now, I could talk about the pros and the con cons of uh, Zoom eyepieces, but to be honest with you, the cons just far far outweigh the the pros. Um, the only advantage I can think of with a zoom eyepiece is they're convenient, and you've got one eyepiece to deal with or one eyepiece to lose. <laughs> In my case, I often lose something when I'm out there. Um, but that's that's about all I can think of about the bonuses of owning a zoom eyepiece. So let's just start off with um, all the cons of uh, these particular Zoom eyepieces. Now these eyepieces fall at all the, mo the most important aspects of an eyepiece. And the first being uh, something called eye relief. Now eye relief is just simply how far your eye has, has to be from the eyepiece to get uh, a comfortable viewing uh, position. And uh, these Zoom eyepieces have very poor eye relief. Now, if you're an eyeglass wear, uh, you wear prescription uh, glasses, you know what a problem this can be when you've got eyepieces with uh, very narrow eye relief. So that's the first bad thing um, with these uh, Zoom eyepieces. But by far the worst thing about these eyepieces is two things. One, they have really bad, uh, a thing called comorin, and another thing they have is something called chromatic aberration. Now, these are just two fancy words for one, stretch stars, and another one, false colour. Now, for a better example of what I mean here, uh, take a look at this photograph of Orion Nebula. Now, this is a very extreme dramatic case of uh, chromatic aberration and... Um, uh, comorin. But uh, now there is colour in the Orion Nebula. If you do any kind of long exposure photograph, it will bring out colour in the Orion Nebula, but not as much as this photograph showing. And if you look at the centre of the field of view, it's pretty okay. The, the, the image is sharp enough. But as you come out towards the edges, you get this very stretched uh, affair going off, especially with the stars that almost look like little tic tacs. Um, and also little rainbows. Like I say, that was a very, very uh, dramatic picture of it. It's not quite as bad as that through the zoom eyepieces, but that just gives you an idea of what you're going to get. Now, you see, the problem is they're not expensive. They're round about, I've seen them as little as £20, and they, they range from £20 to £40, something like that, or, or what your country's equivalent to. 
And the problem is, you would be far, far, far better off spending 30, 40 pounds on a good old uh, reliable Plossel eyepiece. Just one eyepiece, um, as opposed to these uh, claiming that you've got 16. Now, you may be thinking, well, well that doesn't kind of make sense. Surely 16 is better than one. Well, no. And, and another thing, you may own a Zoom eyepiece and think, well, what's this guy talking about? You know, I love my Zoom eyepiece. And please don't think I've been a snob here at all in any shape or form. But that's probably because you've never tried anything just a little bit better. And um, a Plossel eyepiece is just that little bit better. They're not expensive Plossel eyepieces. And a good Plossel eyepiece can last you a lifetime. I always recommend a 15mm Plossel. Works great with a Barlow. Um, and will <laughs> get you get so much more use out of a 15mm Plossel than you will one of these Zoom eyepieces. See, if you think of Zoom eyepieces a little bit like a Swiss Army knife or a multi-tool, all those individual tools are useful and they serve a purpose, but not one of them is as good as the actual individual tools and a zoom eyepiece is never going to be as good as an in and you know separate individual eyepieces now my biggest bugbear with zoom eyepieces are they are very appealing to the beginner somebody who's just starting an astronomy um, because of what they claim to do you know as soon as you can hear that the you know can zoom in so many times it's just so appealing and th there's a big problem with this when you when you first learn in astronomy now, I always preach to spend time at the eyepiece. If you're doing any kind of visual astronomy, just to, to spend, you know, a good five minutes at the eyepiece, which doesn't sound like a long time, but five minutes just standing at an eyepiece is quite a long time. But once you take in um, and, and spend time and take in all the information that you're actually seeing, you're going to appreciate the hobby so much more in the long run. What zoom eyepieces do, especially when you're new to the hobby, is you're just going to play with it all the time. You're not really, it's going to be more of a distraction than something that's going to aid you because you're just going to be putting it in there and the next thing you're going to be zooming it, oh look, I'm going to make it go zoom that bigger, then you'll be zooming it in and out and then you'll point it to a planet and you'll be doing the same and so the moon. <laughs> And you'll be just playing and you'll be just spending more time than actually taking these amazing targets and something as simple as the moon, something that you've seen a thousand times, spend time at the eyepiece, just observing it under low power. You'll be surprised just how much detail and how much more detail just start popping out, uh, just spending that little bit more time at the eyepiece and not zooming in and out. If you are thinking of, because uh, Christmas is just around the corner after all, and you have got one of these Zoom eyepieces on your shopping list, I would scratch that out and change it for a Plossel eyepiece. Um, and like I say, a 15mm, something like that, is a good all round eyepiece. And I can guarantee you, after you've had your Zoom eyepiece for a while, it's going to finish up like mine, lost in some bottom drawer somewhere in time. <laughs> now, as for what are more expensive Zoom eyepieces like, you know, the branded ones, well, it's, I'm going to have to just go on word of mouth. I personally never use one. I've just heard that the uh, all the symptoms we've talked about today are still there. Um, I honestly think they're more of a gimmick and they are targeted at beginners um, because like I say when you're new to hobby, the, the hobby this is they just seem appealing you know and uh, like keep your money save your money save up for a decent plus like I've said and uh, you'll, you'll thank me for it in the long run trust me. Well, there you go, folks. That's my opinion on Zoom eyepieces. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and hit the notifications bell because I do like to do regular uploads and uh, I, I like to get one out at least once a week. So uh, you don't want to miss the next one. You never know. Might be that video you've just been looking for. Well, in the meantime, folks, go and uh, buy yourself a Plossel, not a Zoom, and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.